Grace and peace. My name is Ryan, and I'm the movie pastor. I want to talk today about the movie Harriet, and I neglected to take out my Bible, but I'm, I'm going to take it out because the movie starts with just a really loaded reality. And before we can say anything else about the movie, we're going to need to deal with this. In the movie, a black preacher, a free black preacher, is speaking to slaves. And he has them sing a particular hymn, a hymn that says, keep your hand on the plow. And then he reads to them from Colossians. And he says, you slaves must obey your earthly masters in everything you do. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. Obey them willingly because of your reverent fear of the Lord. Then he closes the Bible, and the slave masters who are on the porch proceed to abuse the slaves and the law that should be instructing how to teach those slaves. And so before we say anything about God and theology and the story of Harriet Tubman, we have to deal with this reality that the Bible has been used. Passages in the Bible that are, that are really in there have been used to justify slavery and the abuse of slaves. Now, I could try to tie that up with a neat little bow. I could, I could give you what, what's called a, a defense, an apology, which doesn't mean saying you're sorry, but means giving an argument. I could point out to you that the next verses say, remember that uh, uh, slave owners, you must be just and fair to your slaves. Remember that you have a master in heaven which in a lot of ways dismantles the, the whole system of slavery. If, if you slave masters aren't masters, but you have a master, then you're slaves, and then everybody's slaves, and then how can you have slaves anymore? But the Bible doesn't explain that part of it. It just has those verses which can be taken out of context and have been, and then people suffer. That's, that's complicated. Um, and so independent of the way the Bible deals with it, independent of the other sections of the Bible that say there is no male nor free, female, Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, we're all one in Christ Jesus, there is an issue. Well, let me say this. I think that the movie Harriet does a great job addressing that issue. The same preacher that it puts the, the sermon into the mouth of that defends slavery via uh, quoting verses like this is later shown to be operating a stop on the Underground Railroad. And it is by being known and developing a reputation for being very pro-slavery and encouraging the people to think that he really thinks God wants people to have slaves, that he's able to free many slaves, including Harriet Tubman herself. It's also true that the same hymns, the hymns like Keep Your Hand on the Plow, which are used to defend and subjugate people, are also used as a way of passing secret messages, as a way of saying goodbye to loved ones and returning in ways that the masters don't understand and don't appreciate. It's also true within the narrative of Harriet that the biblical story is used to defend abolition and is recognized even in the mouths of slave masters that God supports the abolition of slavery because when they see Harriet Tubman working and they see what she is doing to free the slaves, they call her Moses, because that's what Moses did. Moses freed the slaves, and so she's acting like Moses. And that's that's true. That's historically true, and it's true in the movie. Um, it's also theologically true. Many people in Christian history 
have looked to the story of Moses as an indication that God is a God of liberation. God is a God who sets the captives free. God is always on the side of the captives. And there are captives, and God speaks to them, and he talks about how they're to behave. But uh, but even when God's not actively saying, hey, captives, by the way, you shouldn't be captive, God is on their side, and God is with them. We see that in this film. I, I think God exists in the film, Harriet. I think... That's really the first movie that I've seen since I started this movie pastor series where there is definitely a God, and it's the Judeo-Christian God. The movie doesn't make sense if, if the God that Harriet believes in, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Jesus Christ, isn't there to do miracles. Harriet prays that her master would be taken away, that, that he would be struck dead, and he is Harriet prays to find a way to bring the family members that she's bringing to freedom to safety, and God answers that prayer. And so in some movies, uh, it's not clear whether God exists or not. It's, uh, it's not critical to the story. In some movies, there, there is no God, but it's kind of like aliens. You know, in some movies, aliens exist. In some movies, they don't. In this movie, God definitely exists. And so if you don't believe in God, you've just got to accept that, well, this is, this is a movie where there's a God. Uh, I, I find that really interesting, that, that miracles happen in this movie, and that it, it shows Harriet's faith. It shows her belief that, you know, God didn't mean for people to own people. That's, that's not what it's about. There's, there's not a articulate, you know, let me take apart the original language and show you why that's not true. There's just a, a faithful understanding of here's, here's how God really works. <laughs> um, and I, again, I, I can't think of a better, a better apology than that, a better defense for the Bible than that to say, look at, look at the black churches, look at the, the Christians who were former slaves and look at the way they read the Bible. Cause they've, they've got an understanding of it. Um, and they've really, I, I think, white Christians owe black Christians a lot in terms of Christianity existing in America, because we probably wouldn't have been able to salvage any kind of moral high ground after the atrocities of slavery had it not been for the slaves who found in Jesus Christ liberation and truth and love. There are a couple other aspects I want to talk about in the movie Harriet. Harriet has seizures, uh, and when she talks about those problems, when she talks about the spells that are a result of head trauma to one of the other abolitionists, one of the other conductors on the railroad, he writes, possible brain damage. But Harriet doesn't interpret that as a problem doesn't interpret that as something that makes her weaker. Rather, she interprets that as an opportunity for God to use her. That's a brilliant picture of strength in weakness. The things that make you different, the things that make you weird or strange, they don't make you invalid. They make you special. They make you useful. And so within this movie, when Harriet has a spell... The people who know her and the people who trust her, who are around her, say she's praying. She's hearing from God. And don't interrupt her. This, this weakness is a part of what makes her great. It's a part of what makes her Moses. I, I think that's interesting. And then, and then going along with that, the narrative shape of Harriet. Is, is interesting to me. It's a, it's a unique kind of movie. You know, a lot of times there are the eight bla basic plots and we're often telling the same movie again and again. You know, it's man versus monster and that, you know, we gotta, we gotta have a myth of redemptive violence where I've gotta rise up and defeat the monster. Well, Harriet's not like that. Harriet is, is cat and mouse, uh, where the mouse is powerful and successful. Harriet uses her gun many times during the film. She points it threateningly, and she is not ashamed or shy to pull it out, but she very rarely fires it. 
and when she fires it, it's never to kill an enemy. She doesn't kill a single enemy in this film. Instead, she consistently runs, she consistently frees, she consistently follows the voice of God, which always leads towards liberation, and she lets the enemies suffer their own consequences for being on the wrong side of history. That makes it a very unique kind of movie. It, it puts it in a, in a select club. There are only so many movies where you have a pacifistic action hero, where you have a, a person who doesn't commit any, uh, well, I won't say she doesn't commit any violence. She does shoot a guy's hand at one point, but, uh, isn't out to destroy, but is out to create, is out to free, is out to liberate. And that's, that's who Harriet was in real life. And I thought it was brilliantly depicted in this movie. There was a lot, there were a lot of God moments in Harriet, a lot of hymns and a lot of references. I'm sure I missed some of them. So if you would share the ones I missed in the comments, I'd really appreciate it. I'd also love if you could share these videos. If you know people who've seen Harriet, I want to hear what you noticed and uh, expose them to the ability to talk about movies in this kind of way. So feel free to send this link to anyone you know. It's totes free. Bye. And when